I don't think too many people were jumping up and down, hyped up with their mouth watering, waiting to watch Adam Wainwright pitch leading into the 2023 season. Not because he was bad, but he was about to pitch in his age 41 season, his 18th year in the league, and although Wainwright wasn't a bad pitcher at this point in his career, he was obviously not looked at in the same light as the other oldies in the league, like Justin Verlander or Max Scherzer. 40-year-old Justin Verlander had just got done winning his third Cy Young Award in his first season back from Tommy John surgery by pitching to a 1.75 ERA. Yes, it was that ridiculous. And 38-year-old Max Scherzer was Max Scherzer, still doing his thing at an elite level, and looked at as one of the game's best despite the age. Adam Wainwright may not have been looked at like that, but he still had a really good 2022 season. I'm making it sound otherwise, but he was really good. He made 32 starts through over 190 innings, pitching his way to a 3.71 ERA in the Cardinals team that win 93 games and finish in first place in the NL Central Division. Was he striking a ton of guys out? No. Was he as dominant as vintage Adam Wainwright when he was a Cy Young candidate every year? Obviously not. But he was still a very solid pitcher for the Cardinals, and someone who's obviously going to make the opening day roster for 2023. But 2023 was going to be a little different than every other year in Adam Wainwright's career, and that's because it was going to be his last, as he'd announced he was going to retire, but not before returning for one final hurrah in 2023. His final season started off with a bang, and he hadn't even towed the rubber yet and thrown a pitch. On opening day, right as the national anthem was about to begin, Wainwright walked up to the person performing it, pushed them to the ground, grabbing the mic in the process, and proceeded to sing the national anthem himself while the crowd in St. Louis cheered him on. Okay, that's not quite what actually happened, but at least a couple of you had to have believed that for a second. That would have been a pretty funny and badass scene out of a movie though, you can't lie. What really happened was that the story I told you was half true. Adam Wainwright did sing the national anthem on opening day in St. Louis. He just didn't push anyone to the ground and steal the microphone in the process. He was the one planned to sing it, he did, and it was a pretty cool moment. I mean, here is Adam Wainwright, a Cardinals legend, also just casually showing that he can sing too. Something everyone totally expected to eventually happen back in 2006. So, pretty cool moment for Adam Wainwright's 2023 season before it officially even began. And how would it go on the mound? Before we get into that, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content and haven't yet. Thank you. Adam Wainwright, and I'm putting this very lightly, has had a terrible season this year. It sucks, obviously. This was supposed to be his ride off into the sunset, yet it's been bad in every way. The Cardinals as a whole have had a terrible season and very well might finish the year in last place just one year after finishing in first place, and Wainwright has only helped with that failure. I hate to say it, but he's virtually been batting practice out there for the Cardinals. In the 21 starts he's made this year, six of them have featured Wainwright giving up at least five runs and eight of them where he's given up at least four. He's only struck out 55 hitters in 101 innings, has given up 20 home runs, and has an ERA near seven and a half on the year. He wasn't even able to start his season until May due to a groin issue, but did collect his first win of the season on May 18th against the Dodgers, throwing five and two thirds innings while only giving up two runs. His next start wasn't so good with Wainwright pitching five and two thirds again, but giving up five runs in the process to the Reds in Cincinnati. Despite his struggles, he'd actually get the win for that game. He'd collect his third win of the season in June against the Mets, going six and a third, giving up three runs, good enough for the Cardinals to win the game and have Wainwright credited for it. He'd have to go back on the injured list in July for a few weeks, this time due to some shoulder discomfort, come back, fail to get a win that month and in the next month, August. So Adam Wainwright had just one month left to go in his entire career, and this was pretty significant because I've been going through the few wins he was getting throughout the season, but Wainwright entered 2023 with 195 career wins. Skip ahead to the start of September and three more wins had been added to the overall number, and if you weren't aware, 200 wins in baseball as a pitcher is a historic achievement that only so many people can say they've accomplished. Wainwright was now just two away from that big number at 198, and it had been that way for a while. Like I said, he went all of July without getting a win, spending the majority of that month hurt and pitching poorly when he did pitch in three starts, and then went all of August without getting a win, pitching to an ERA near 11 for that month in five starts. As for his first start of the final month in his career, terrible. I mean, it was almost just sad to watch at this point. He'd throw an absolute cookie to Acuna in the first inning, a pitch that was just begging to be crushed, and it sure was, getting lined into left center field for a homer. 
Acuna took him deep again later in the game. Oh, and the Braves also hit two other home runs, so Wainwright gave up six runs on eight hits, half of which were home runs, while also walking three. And at this point, you had to just think really good luck was going to have to play a big part in Wainwright's last few starts if he was going to reach 200 career wins. The Braves, the best team in the National League, are an insane lineup, and Wainwright wasn't getting a break next time out now facing another great lineup, the best team in the American League, the Baltimore Orioles. And surprisingly, it actually was not that bad, with Wainwright giving the Cardinals five solid innings in Baltimore, giving up just two runs, getting the win, now just one single win away from 200. His next start, back home against the first place Brewers on Monday night, and the Cardinals would go out and only score a single run all night, with Adam Wainwright on the mound, a guy with an ERA over seven, and a negative wins above replacement in 2023. Recipe for disaster. Might as well call it a night and hope he gets win number 200 in his next start. But Adam Wainwright said, enough messing around. Drank a little bit of water from the fountain of youth and pitched like it was 2013, throwing seven shutout innings while giving up just four hits. The Cardinals bullpen kept the Brewers offense off the board for the last two innings, winning the game one to nothing and giving Adam Wainwright his 200th career victory. Just how we all drew it up, Adam Wainwright has been straight up having the worst time out on the mound in 2023. To expect him to allow no runs in a game was as wishful thinking as it gets, but baseball works in mysterious, funny, and magical ways because even at his worst, in a year that's just been so crappy and terrible pitching-wise for Adam Wainwright, the baseball gods still gave us a magical moment, giving us vintage Adam Wainwright on Monday night, or at least pretty damn close to it throwing seven shutout innings in a game where his team only scored one run the entire game. So the literal only way for Wainwright to get his 200th win in this game was to do something he hadn't even come close to doing all year long, which is to allow no runs. So naturally, that's exactly what he did. I don't care if Adam Wainwright ends up doing terrible in his last couple of starts to end off 2023 in his career. This game against the Brewers, and really the last two games as a whole, against the Orioles too, getting wins in back-to-back -back starts, one in Baltimore and then dominating the Brewers for career win number 200, that's how I'm gonna remember the end of this man's career. He did all that was needed to be done in his final season. It took a little longer than he had hoped, and it was a very bumpy road getting there, but now we can all add Adam Wainwright to the list of players with 200 career wins. That's riding into the sunset enough for me, especially since he's going to be performing his very own concert on the final weekend of the season. Enjoy retirement, Wayno.